Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So I hope you are enjoying a great weekend, and welcome to another new video on my channel. So it's the weekend, and I decided to take the day really easy by ordering a takeout brunch from Cora. They have this nice, cute sticker on the takeout package, and I decided to stick it in my art journal. I will sketch right here. I was so hungry and I ate half of my um, crepe burrito, so now I'm sketching this other half. As always, I like to draw the outline of the object first. And this line is really important to define the three-dimensional form of the wrap. And now I'm just quickly adding the inside details, the eggs, the beans, and the veggies. So when sketching food items like this, I use a lot of quick broken lines. And now I'm adding these potato wedges, one piece after another, connecting them. It's a bit of overlapping here. Among the potato wedges, a lot of broken lines to show the soft baked texture. little bit hatching to suggest shade and add a little bit three dimension. Okay, so now I'm pushing very gently with my drawing pen to draw these lines because I can see through the crepe. The crepe burrito is semi-transparent and I can see the texture of the food inside the wrap. So now I am drawing the rim of the salsa in a paper cup. The textures inside and the body of the paper cup. The logo of the, of the uh, restaurant. Isn't that really cute, smiley sun? Now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. So I wetted the areas first with clear water. And the first layer is always the lightest tone that I see, a mix of lemon yellow, yellow ochre for the potato wedges, orange, red, and brown for the salsa, and mix of um, brown with a little bit ultramarine blue so the brown looks darker, very loose. I'm just letting the two layers of colors blend together so it looks more lively instead of like solid. The left, leftover gray on my palette to paint the paper cup. Adding another layer of more intense brown. So I use burnt sienna and mix in a little bit ultramarine blue into the burnt sienna to make it darker. Mix in more or less water to control the transparency of the paint or intensity. So most of the time I paint really watery first and as the layers build up, I put more solid paint with less water on top of the previous layers. So now I'm adding these reds for the peppers and tomato pieces. So the thing just doesn't look too boring with just brown. So I painted a cerulean blue background for this set of food sketches. And now I'm adding the shadows for everything. A mix of ultramarine blue with a little bit of purple. Wet on wet with the uh, cerulean blue background. And just let the blending go. That's my finished sketch. It took me about 12 minutes to finish drawing and painting. Now I'm ready to finish my brunch. And in the afternoon, my parents brought back these little cherry tomatoes from our family friend's garden and I will of course sketch them in my art journal. So here is my art journal spread so far. I use very basic sketch materials, a drawing pen right on my sketchbook, watercolor palette, and two water brushes and I will sketch the tomatoes in this area right here. 
So when drawing a cluster of things, I always start drawing the one on the very front, not being covered by other stuff. So I started to draw this little tomato in the very front. Sometimes I draw the stem first, then the circular body, or I draw the body first and then the stem, depending on how I feel. These stems are really cute, like little starfish. There's a bit of overlapping here. This little tomato is behind this one. Adding another one behind and drawing this wavy stems, like seaweed too. Another one behind and the belly button. Okay, and there's a tiny little tomato here and another one beside it. I think these stems are adding so much life to these tomatoes. Using loose pen lines to show the shine on the surface. And now I'm ready to paint with watercolors, just wetting everything with clear water first. First layer, it's not a very intense color yet. It's a mix of orange and yellow. Saving some highlight streaks white. Okay, so now after the first layer is dried a little bit, I'm gonna add the second layer. So I mixed a little bit of magenta red into the orange and less water so the color is more dense. Again, not painting in those little streaks of highlights. As you can see, now I'm using a thinner water brush just so I have more control over those tiny little areas. So as you can see, these orange reds are not super clean and vibrant. I actually mixed a teeny tiny bit of leftover blue into them because organic stuff in nature have a teeny tiny bit of muddy color. They're not super vibrant like, like chemicals. That's a color of nature that I really want. So they are kind of a brownish orange red. And now for the third layer, I mixed in even more magenta into the orange. Again, it still looks a little bit um, brownish red, the color of nature. I'm blending in a little bit green because part of those little tomatoes have, um, you know, little um, green spots. Keep adding a little bit brownish red and those little green spots as I observe. The left hand side of these tomatoes are generally darker because the light source comes from the right hand side. So now just painting these thin little stems very quickly with very thin green mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre. Pretty straightforward. Adding another layer of darker tone of green around some areas of the stem. Okay, so now I'm gonna paint the shadows. So I mix my own shadow color by mixing ultramarine blue and purple and green. I'm also adding a layer of watery reflective color from these tomatoes, as you can see. And then adding the dark blue on top. And now I'm just adding another layer for these tomatoes, the shade color, mixing a little bit of green into the orange red. Adding a lot of these shadow colors around the bottom left hand side because the light source comes from the right hand side. The left hand side is in shade.
Okay, so after the first layer of, of shadows dries up a bit, I'm adding an even darker tone of ultramarine blue, purple, and green around the bottoms of these tomato. So there's more contrast and gradients. Another layer for these stems. And that's it. I'm gonna keep it really simple and not overpainting. And that's the finished sketch and the look of my art journal spread so far. So this evening I see the sky outside my reading room window is so beautiful and I forgot to take a video before I start sketching. So anyway, now I'm just drawing a very irregular frame. It's not a rectangle, but um, it's a trapezoid shape. So I wanted the, uh, these little tomatoes to um, come into the frame so it looks more playful. And now I'm starting to draw the maple trees, branches, and leaves on the foreground on the right hand side, using a lot of simple squiggly lines to show the texture of the leaves. I'm not trying to draw every single leaf that's on there, just in general, just my impression. Okay, and keep going. I think I'm ready to move on to the next object in the scenery. It's the uh, triangular rooftop right beneath the maple branches. Adding a little more maple branches in front of it. Drawing this window here. I've been drawing this scenery so many times over the years. So I'm really familiar with all the overlappings and structures. These house shapes are pretty much like kids building blocks. I'm seeing very simple shapes instead of seeing a really complex architectural house. Keep adding more tree, trees and bushes around the house. More rooftops behind. Parallel lines for the uh, rooftop structures, for the uh, rooftop textures. Some trees in the far distance. Just pull here behind, adding more um, rooftops. Very simple shapes. And then gradually adding more trees in the distance. That's it. So when painting a landscape, I always paint the sky first. The evening sky has a really nice turquoise color and cerulean blue on top. So wet on wet here. This part is a cloud, and cloud in the evening, they're not white. They, can, they have a lemon yellow glow. And the sunshine color is reflecting onto these trees and houses too. Okay, so with just varying green and yellow ochre, or medium yellow, you can mix so many shades of greens. So as you can see here in my watercolor painting, and now I'm adding orange-red for the maple tree. And this color is really echoing with the uh, little tomatoes. Now I'm switching to a very thin brush and use very thin brush marks to draw the shade for the cloud around the horizon. Wet on wet, red mixed with brown and a little bit ultramarine blue for the shade color of the maple tree leaving some parts from the first layer to show the shine. Dark brown for part of the rooftops, ultramarine blue for part of the house to show the contrast of sunshine and shade. Another layer of more intense green so I mix brown into the uh, varying green for a darker shade of um, green for the trees. Another layer of ultramarine blue and purple for the clouds in the distance is a very important element. Some final polish. And that's it. 
that's my finished sketch and the look of my art journal spread so far.